full of gratitude for your kindness we pray that you speak to every heart today by the power of your spirit in jesus mighty name we pray amen praise the lord hallelujah amen glory to god we're going to listen to some testimonies this morning and um surprisingly all our testifiers have stayed back you know they all stayed back okay thank you thank you they all stayed back and um we're going to listen to testimony on that we're going to make it shorter so that <clears throat> we can we're going to make it shorter so that everyone can be blessed so let's invite sister adiola for our testimony <laughs> hallelujah amen yes good afternoon church good afternoon um, praise god it all started um last year in march um i was my period got delayed and finally when i saw my period um it didn't stop i um it was going on and on and it was so very your period early. was just flowing continuously yes okay so um i had to go check myself i went for a scan went to see a doctor and that was when the result came out and i was told like i have fibroid and endometriosis so when it was um when they told me that so i had to say gynecologist i met with two different specialists and they requested that i need to go for the same scan and which i did it came out positive again let's just put perspective to this so your your spirit your your your, your period started flowing in march yeah. when it's and it never stopped for six months or more than that no it didn't stop you were bleeding every day how much how much pad were you using every day I was, I was using eight pad and it got to a stage i had to use um i had to cut clothes and i even requested for an adult pampas because the flow was very bad wow. and because of that i couldn't go out i couldn't do anything my life was just just imagine stopped. for for six to eight months she had a menstrual flow that was flowing every day and every day she was using eight menstrual pad that was not sufficient because of her menstrual flow wow okay so what did, let's jump so, over to um, yes my auntie introduced me to nlp so she had to tell me that i should keep my faith to nlp and since because i've been seeing testimonies as well and meanwhile during the flow i always have my seizures and it was very bad as well so when there was a day pastor Balaji, um called out like seizures and he actually prophesied that we are healed and he talked about fibroid as well i had to get into my testimony and there was a day i was hearing a testimony of a lady as well having fibroid and i had to keep in my faith it got to a stage the nothing was working as well but the doctor told me that i need to come over for a surgery but i have phobia for surgery so i had to run for it so later on in um september during the fasting and prayer my auntie had to tell me like okay well, let's go on with the fasting and prayer as well so i keep in to eat like okay believing god that definitely i'm going to have my testimony as well and nothing was working but fast forward october i just slept packed myself just the regular way i do pack myself and i woke up in the morning and i noticed that the blood stopped for three days i was not flowing to the week to today i am not flowing so um and you must remember that was october last year she took one whole year to check it she was flowing from blood healed and these are the medical reports yeah she went to the hospital to do a test this is a medical report where the doctor said you had endometriosis and fibroid. fibroid. You went to do another test and what did the doctor say? So I went to do another test this um, year, that was January. And um, during the scan, I, they checked it and they said no fibroid found and no endometriosis. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. Bless you. Let's invite Sister Janet for our testimony. Let's put our hands together as you know. Yeah, let's praise the Lord hallelujah good afternoon, church. good afternoon um i was introduced to investors last year february by my younger sister a friend introduced her to the church so she, she asked me to follow her and she says this early money kind of church go i said like i don't want to go she said let's go first service is always cool the atmosphere is good. I said, okay, no problem. I came with her that day. And then after the church, I went back. So she was like, they're having relationship and marriage um, program. It's like, it's going to last for, for
for a month. Would you like to join? I said, I will go. So that fateful day, Pastor Boladi was talking about emotional baggage. And he had like four bags here. I could remember, like, have, have a mental picture of what happened that day, the way he was dragging the bag. So I sat somewhere there, back. That was for the first service. Second service, I moved further. I moved closer. Third service, I also moved last. Um, last service, I, I sat somewhere on the second row. And Pastor Balaji was hammering on. You have to check yourself. Check yourself. You could be the problem. The way Pastor Balaji was preaching that, it was like, Pastor Balaji said, you, come out. Yeah, lie down here. Number one. Okay. So Pastor Balaji was just, it, I could not really concentrate. I was crying. I didn't know what got over me. I was just shedding tears. And before that time, my relationship had been ups and down. I had a very serious issue with my first boyfriend. So that really turns me off. I don't trust anybody except my family, no matter who you are. Pastor, anybody, I don't trust you. Like, so a guy will come and tell me, oh, Jane, you know, I, I'm in love with you. I lo I, you are my ass. You are my, mm -hmm. hey, God. That one not concern me. I'll just say story for the gods. That day now, that, that year, it's story for... So, so, so I don't believe in a guy coming to tell me, even if he show me love, to me, it's normal thing. It's not love. Like, if his love is not coming from my family, I can't take it. So that day, Pastor Balaji really dealt with me. I had to go back and check because my relationship with my, my, my um, boyfriend then was not, it was bad. That he had to call me like, did I offend you? What did that? What can I do? Is it I kill myself? That was his word. I was like, I beg, I beg. I'm always right, though. There's no how you fight. I'm always right. You can't tell me that. So the thing was just, but that day, I made my decision. When I got to the house, I carried my phone. You know how I don't, I don't want to exaggerate, but you know how you check a message on WhatsApp and you read more, read more, read my own is read more, read more, read more. I wrote like an episode. That message changed my life. Praise like, God. this is the product of that message I sent that day. Like, I am married to this same guy. You know, I told him, I said, forgive me for bleeding on you. I, I, I now realize that. Hold on. That I, I want my camera to focus on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I told him, I said, forgive me for bleeding on you. I, I now realize that you have to treat yourself first before you treat somebody else. So, guys. I, I want to ask you a question. Just focus on her. <laughs> All the time you were doing this, you were 38 years old. Yes, I was 38 years old. And I was still... I'm, I'm only telling you that. <laughs> I'm saying so because you can be at that age and be desperate and be doing the wrong thing. And if not for the teaching, probably you'll be 40 and there'll be nobody. Yes, and I've even prayed. I go to work. I pray anywhere. I, you know, it got to a point that my mom said, why are you choosing? Like... Are you, have you forgotten that you're getting old? Like, meh, meh. But I didn't need, it was, it was, it's now done to me that I never needed more, that much prayers. Or the only it was the right teaching. It was the right teaching that gave me, you know, it changed my perspective. Oh, wow. It's like, I, now I would just say, babe, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Praise you know, God. And things just keep getting better. So when I heard the relationship series was going to hold this period also, and I listened to Pastor Moore, I was like, ah, this one is advanced class. I have to come back. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. You know, let me just warn you ahead of time. Today, I'm going to really talk about that. Why people in relationship pray and it doesn't work for them. And the reason why is that sometimes what you need is not more prayer. What you need is teaching. Because there's adjustment that you have to make yeah. Okay, let's listen to last this morning. Spiral. Spiral, you just want to look at the screen and look at what you looked like some years ago. Look at the screen and look at what Spiral looked like some years ago. <laughs> Poverty was written all over you. <laughs> yeah. So, we've come to give all the glory to God. Like... The God of Abbey Stars has added award winning to my name. A um, couple of months back, it was just spiral, but we thank God. So I was going through um, something on Twitter. Someone sent it to me and someone said, 
Um, a Twitter influencer said, how come this guy with just one song is buying properties, he's doing big things, and um, the person was really questioning that. And I'm like, you don't even know the grace from the ministry that I'm coming from. You know, because, because um, my, my partner is here and he can attest to the fact that these things are literally impossible under one year. Like literally, like if an artist is here, please, you can attest to what I'm saying. Like in one year, you get these awards, you buy properties, you're doing this, you're doing that. And I just want to say all glory to God. And we are here to say, to return all the glory to him. Thank you, Jesus. And please, I want to say something lastly to everyone here. Please remember to serve God in your peak, at your peak rather. Please don't wait don't wait for when you go down before you start serving God. Because serving God at your peak is what continues to lift you. When you give your all to God, God gives his all to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Balaji. Thank God. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> Many people think the year is rounding up. We say the year is picking up. It's picking up. Wow. Ready? Okay. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to Matthew chapter 7. Yeah, you'll be really blessed today. You'll be really blessed today. And remember that in the fourth service, I'm teaching about something else. I'm teaching about something else in the fourth service today. Yeah, yeah. You'll be really blessed today. You'll be really blessed. If you can, you can take your phones and share the link with your friends. If they can put the link on the screen or something, you can just tell them to follow you. on. It's being streamed on YouTube, Facebook, instagram so that they can follow and we can we can share that with them if you can do that that'll be a good opportunity all of you online you can help me share the link with your friends so let's read first and you'll see what this message is going to today you're going to understand the reason why you're going to understand one reason like the lady said why despite all the prayer why didn't the relationship miracle happen you're going to really we're going to dive into that today I'm going to talk a lot about belief system. I'm going to talk a lot about belief system. So in Matthew, yeah, in, in Matthew chapter 7, the Bible says this. Watch what the Bible says. In verse 16, it says, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather of tons? Do men gather grapes of tons? Or figs of thistles? So what the, what the Lord was saying here was this. Will you give me another translation with the message translation or the, or the passion translation? He says, we say it in our, in our own colloquia. I say, by their fruit you shall know them. So what he was saying is this. Uh, maybe you should do the message translation. This is so put together. The, the passion translation rather. He says, by their fruit you shall know them. Everybody take note of this. You can spot them by their action. For the fruit of their character will be obvious. You won't find sweet grapes hanging on a thorn bush. You will not pick good fruit from a tumbleweed. Everybody listen to this. Listen to this. If when the Bible says fruits, fruit in the Bible means manifestation. Fruit in the Bible means experiences. Fruit in the Bible means results. So what the Bible is saying is this. When you see the result, you can see the tree. He says, when you see, and that's what we mean by, by their fruit, you shall know them. Someone says, how can you know what's going on on the inside of me? If I hear you, if I hear the result, if I see the result, I can tell what's happening within you. How do I know this? If you have been going through a series of damaged relationship, that is the fruit but the thing is that there is a tree inside you that is producing that fruit. If you have been going through consistent heartbreak, that heartbreak is the fruit. There is a tree inside you that is producing that fruit. What we try to do is this. We are hoping that prayer will remove the fruit and the tree. No, sir. If you find yourself producing wrong fruits what you want to do is to change the tree so the lady that testified you know what she did she was self-sabotaging herself let me what's self-sabotage 
Self-sabotage is when you begin to walk against what you're praying for. Self-sabotage is when you walk against what you want, what you're praying for. Let me give you an example of this. Let me give an example of this in a relationship. In a relationship, you want to be married, then you meet a guy or a girl, and you begin to do the things that will make the person stay away from you. It can manifest in two ways. You can become too extremely clingy as if something is chasing you. So the person will send desperation and pull away. But it can also come in a way that you don't want to be so clingy, you are so detached that the person cannot also come close to you. It can manifest in several ways. But at the root of it is that you are self-sabotaging. That's what it is. You are what? You are self-sabotaging. I'll give an example. Do you know there are many people that want to get married that wear a ring on their wedding finger? Even right now. And you will ask them, why are you wearing a ring on my finger? I don't want anybody to stop me. I said, you don't want anybody to stop you, but you want to get married. You're just self-sabotaging. So, I wanted to go back to the scripture. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 7 quickly. So, it says this. It says, you shall know them by the fruit. So, what am I saying? So, when you look at your life and there is a particular fruit, you need to ask yourself, what tree is this fruit coming from? What is the fruit? The fruit is the manifestation. The fruit is the result. What is the tree? The tree is the belief system. So every time, listen, there can be no fruit without a tree. The fruit is the manifestation. The tree is the belief system. So what happens to people is this. Let me tell you what happens to people. People want to change the fruit. They will be cutting the fruit down. You can't change the fruit that way. You can remove the fruit. It will grow back again what you want to change is the tree because the seed is in the self the tree is germinating so i'll give an example so when you talk to someone that's relationship problems you're not gonna you are too uptight you don't dress well all of a sudden she's not dressing well she's not she's not uptight and sees no result the reason why she's no result is this she's changing the fruit she's not changing what the tree it's not as if what she's doing is not working. But it's the fruit that she... And I'm saying so to here. Everybody look at me. Let me say this powerfully. If your relationship, marriage, everything is going to work, the most important changes you will make are first internal, not external. The most important changes you will make are first what? Internal, not external. And what are internal changes? Number one, you must allow the teaching to affect the way you think. You must allow the teaching to affect the way you think. There are Some of you have grown up trees. When I say trees, trees means belief system. Some of you have trees on the inside of you. Established belief systems that are working against you. How do I know? For example... I'm trying to be careful because people are going to say you don't understand them, which is not true. But the truth is the truth. If you don't have guys, girls, if you don't have guys that ask you out like on the regular, like there's a drought. Trust me, there's a tree inside you of scarcity. I'm telling you, there's a tree inside you of scarcity. I, there's a lady that which was here, she's not here. She walks closely with me. I just asked her one day. I said, exactly, why are you dating? I've known you for years now. You never told me you're dating somebody. You never told me this, this, this. He said, nobody, nobody might ask me out. People don't notice, they don't ask me out. I said, really? He said, for maybe for like four years, nobody have asked her out. Maybe two or four years. I said, ah. She's in her 20s. So she's not old. I said, sit down. He said, oh, Pastor, don't worry, don't worry. It's okay, it's okay. No, I said, sit down. So we sat down. We sat down for two hours. I don't even know why I found the time that day. She was crying. By the time she was crying, I could tell something broke loose in her. I said, when you get home, do this and this and this and this. After about three or four months, she told me that people are flocking me all over. I said, what changed? He said, even my sister told me that I've changed. I didn't tell her to address what in. Was the And that's what the Bible says. Whatsoever tree my father has not planted, 
it shall be rooted out you know why one the belief system was rooted out and another tree was planted what happened our experiences began to change what happened to that girl in that testimony was this there was a tree inside that made that self-sabotage by hearing god's word that tree was uprooted another tree manifested the fruit of that tree was the apology but she could have apologized without a tree the manifestation will be short-lived because that manifestation comes without roots because that manifest these are deep things though that manifestation comes without roof are you here so the reason why i'm saying this and, and i'm saying one the reason why i'm saying this is because you need to know what the problem is the problem is this is in the tree which is the belief system but a lot of us are putting our attention on the fruits so you see girls that be like if you start going to a club you find a boyfriend if you start you know it's your clothes you, you dress too closely you are too this you let me tell you something those things may or may not be affecting you what is affecting you is the belief system the belief system is going to manifest in what in fruits so you need to be honest with yourself and say okay these are the fruits in my life what is the fruit in my life these are the fruits in my life what belief do i have that is producing this kind of fruit in my life get a microphone let's ask some questions you can tell me the you can tell me some results you see pastor i always people that break my heart maybe you have some fruits that are challenging to you we have some experiences that are persistent and you don't even know what kind of tree it is maybe i can help you identify it today maybe we can today identify trees that are bearing certain kind of fruits all right yeah let's go can we have two microphones one on this side and one on the other side yeah just raise up your hands and let's let's do this yeah let's do this praise god Who is going first? Who is this one to go first? And everybody will talk after the first person. Who wants to be that person? If I should give someone fifty dollars, who wants to go first? Someone wants to go first over there. Thank you. Yeah, we go first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give her the microphone. So, um, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, afternoon. <laughs> okay, so for me, I'm always ready to walk out of anyone's life at any moment, and I figure that that's um, from that's because I'm from a dysfunctional family, so I'm very uptight, and my guards are always up. Like you're any, uptight. Yeah. You're not vulnerable. I'm not vulnerable. Your guards are always up. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm always ready to like walk out of anyone's life yeah. every time. So that's the fruit, right? Yeah. So what, what, what belief is influencing that? I don't know, honestly. But so, so tell me about your family. What did you see? Okay, so I grew up in a family that my parents are not together. So did your dad abuse your mom? Um, it wasn't present. It wasn't present? Yeah. But you didn't answer my question. Did your dad abuse your mom? I didn't see them grow together. So, I so but I, what your mom said, did your mom tell you stories of your dad abusing, being abusive? No. Okay. So, you, did, you didn't see all of that? Yeah, I didn't see all of that. Okay. So, your dad wasn't present at all? Yeah. Okay. So, because he wasn't present, how does that... So, because he wasn't present, what do you think about men? So, what I think about men is that most of them are time wasters, honestly. <laughs> Yeah. Most of them are time wasters. Why? Because your dad wasted the time of your mom. Yeah. So I feel like at some point they probably would just walk away or something. So I'm That's where I'm going to. Yeah. You feel as if if you love them, they will eventually walk away. Yeah. Is that not true? Yes. Good. So before they walk away, you walk away. Yes. <laughs> so can you see? So the tree, watch this now. Let me tell you. The tree is that men are time wasters they will walk away so once you have the tree what fruit will you produce you will produce men and experiences of men that are time wasters that what 
will walk away. So, unknown to you, should I tell what you do? You will do things that will make them walk away from you. Have you done some things like that before? Oh, you're not aware? I'm not, yeah. You're not aware? Yeah. Tell me how, the last time you walked away, tell me what happened. Um, so, every time, if I probably do something that upsets the other person. If they yeah. bring it up, in my head, the things they say to me might not be reasonable enough. So, I'm, I don't want to deal with it. And I'm like... I'm done. I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Question. Yeah. To you, you know, I asked you a question. No? Do you do things that make them walk away? You said no. Question. What she said now, does it make people walk away from her? In a normal relationship, man, what happens is this. You don't, because you were not raised together, you cannot have the same perspective. So people are going to tell you things like, oh, and you're going to try to reason together and come to a compromise. So what has happened to you is this. You, you, and it's good that you're saying this because you can fix it now. The major problem is this. You've seen, you believe that men are time wasters. They will walk away. So, that experience is bearing fruit in your life. Question. Are all men time wasters to you? Sincerely. No. I want to ask you, do you have friends that are married? No. I'm you don't have any friends that Do you have an older person that you know that is married? That you, you know, you're close to? There's nobody that you know that is close to that you're married. No, literally. No. Wow. Yeah. That's a bigger problem. Yeah. You know why it's a bigger problem? Because of what you believe, you cannot see it. Yeah. The reason why is that there are people around her that are married, I can bet. But because of how she thinks, she cannot see it. So, you know what that does to her? There's no even point of reference for a miracle. You know what point of reference is? When Israel let the Jordan. God says the stones that the priests use hold it. So that your children, you would tell them, this is what the Lord did. What God wanted was a point of reference. Listen everybody there. When God wants to help you but you cannot understand, God will use a point of reference outside you. If there's no point of reference within you, what God will do first is to do something with your life that will open you up. But if there's no point of reference within you, God will do outside you. That was why when he wanted to use Moses, he did miracles with Moses to open him up. But with Mary, there was no point of reference of pregnancy. So he told Mary that go and meet your cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth became the point of reference that God could do it. Hallelujah. What do you want to change or you're okay with this? Sincerely? Yeah, I want to change. Why do you want to change? I just want to be a better person. And I don't want to grow on the foundation that I learned from my parents. because. I Why do you want to change? I don't think you're serious about it. Uh, okay. I want to have better relationships. What's uh, your name? Bukola. Bukola, you want to really be in love. Don't you want to do that? Yeah, I want to. Yes. You never had a father's love. You're looking for it. Don't you want a man to love you? That's something you miss. Yeah. So why are you denying it? Why are you suppressing it? That's the first thing. Yeah. You're, you, you're the, the first thing is that you will would, would suppress it a lot. You would, so are you attracted to older men a lot? No, just tell me, you know, it's not, this is not, just tell me how you feel. Oh, I find older people, older men attractive, you know, no, don't. you know, you know, or maybe younger persons. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm attracted to younger persons, not older. Okay. Yeah. So what exactly do you want? What exactly, what is that is missing right now? Um, I don't know, honestly. There's no, no. Yeah, I don't know what's missing. You don't know what's missing. Your life is perfect the way it is. Okay. It's okay, right? Yeah. Sometimes you feel very lonely. Yeah, sometimes I want to experience love, yeah. You want to experience love? Yeah. When are those times you want to experience love? <laughs> Tell me the picture of love in your head. Give me three pictures. <clears throat> the love you want to because you want to experience love, it's a picture in your head, it's not a word. Tell me one of the things you want to experience. You want to experience yourself lying naked on the beach in a 
pink bikini and some man scratching down your head down the seas of shoes seashores tell me what you experienced here tell me i also experienced traveling with someone that you love yeah and what will you be doing when you're traveling um, the adventure that comes with it, yeah. What is the adventure that comes with it? I don't know why you don't want to mind your business. <laughs> okay, um, honestly, it's just to learn like new cultures, just traveling and experiencing new cities. Or you want ha- you. So you, let me paint a picture for you. Mm-hmm. You're traveling to, you're coming to Barbados, and you have this guy that is six foot tall, wearing this swimming trunk that is short, blue, has spikes of black on it. You are there with your bikini and pants, and he's holding your hands this way, and you guys are walking on the hot sand as you're walking to the sea. And the guy looks at you and says, I will do this over and over with you. Is that what you're talking about? Um, Is that what you're talking about? I mean, that's part of the That's part package. of it. <laughs> yeah. That's part of it. That's great. Yeah. Could you also be... How old is your mom right now? She's in her 50s. Yeah. Could it also be you know that maybe in the next 30, 40, 50 years, your mom will no longer be around? And you want someone that will be there when your mother is not there again. Yeah. What will this person be doing for you? Okay, so I want to I want to get to a point where I'm married and I want to stay married or like have a successful relationship. So yeah. The reason why I'm saying so is this, and this is one of the things I always do. If you don't have the strong reason why you want to change, you will never change. And why I'm saying so to her is that she's not come up with a strong reason yet. And the reason why she's not come the strong reason is that she has not taken time to think about why she wants what she wants. She has strong reasons why not to do it. But she doesn't have strong... Listen to me, everybody here. If you want to change, you must come up with a strong enough reason to change. I showed you the scripture in the book of Genesis. The Bible says, when you are tired of the yoke, you will break it. You have to be tired of the yoke first. There must be that tiredness that restlessness that takes you there. That's why people can easily succeed from poor to rich. But from rich to richer is very difficult. Because poor to rich, what takes you there is desperation. Rich to richer is vision. Desperation is hotter than vision. So, you, you may think I'm joking or playing around with you on the pictures, but I'm not. I'm trying to tap into something that is within you that you are not releasing. That's what I'm trying to do. You, 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 as you talk to me, you're very guarded. But until you tap into that thing and let it break through within you, I can't help you right now. What do you miss by not being in love? I honestly don't know why I miss is that true yeah. but you're sad sometimes that you don't have someone yes or no sometimes not all the time yeah sometimes why are you sad at those times because it's will be nice to have someone yeah, but why are you sad i never said i never said what to know be like why the times you are sad why are you sad i just want to be i just want to tell me what it is why are you sad at those times so tell me one last time you were sad. Was it last week, last two weeks, last year, six months ago? Um, about five months or four months ago when I had like a, when I had a down moment in my life. Yeah, that was the last time I was sad. You were sad because what did you want at that time? So I was walking towards um, traveling and visa and then it got rejected. So that put me down. Yeah. So what did you want from that loving relationship at that time? To be vulnerable with someone at that point. You wanted someone mm. that you could cry with. How painful was it for you at that time you didn't have anybody to cry with outside your family? It was, it was, it, it was painful, but... 
Was it painful? It was. Yeah. How painful was it? It was very painful, but like. Did you cry? I did for a bit, but then I prayed afterwards. So I was fine. No, I'm not saying you didn't pray. I'm focusing on the pain. You, you, you see how she's trying to shove me away. <laughs> So why did you cry? And what did you want at that moment? I wanted someone to listen to me and probably just console me somehow, yeah. Is that not what you really want? Someone that can be there to listen to you. Yeah. Don't you miss that sometimes? I don't. You really want that, don't you? Mm-hmm. Someone that can give you his or own perspective. What will lead you to have that? I literally don't know. Do you want to have that? Yeah, I want to. I think the first thing you have to do is to say, this is what I want to have. And begin... Are you talking to someone? Are you, looking, you keep looking down? Are you having a conversation? Okay. Because I just wanted to focus a little more. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to be able to do that. What has happened to you is this. Let me tell you what has happened to you. It's a relationship pattern called that is the avoidance. The avoidance style of attachment are people that have never experienced love or they experience in a very short form and know that it may not be there. So they grow up not expecting to have love. It's a defense mechanism. It's a defense mechanism. It's avoidance. They don't, they don't allow too much feeling. So have you loved someone and you broke up because it was getting too much no have you loved someone and you're like this is too much this is too much no have you loved so- have someone ever loved you before and you feel like I'm, I can't get into this I, I, I will not be able to handle this I wouldn't know because I, I don't think I've ever given it a chance no so, yeah. oh wow yeah so what exactly do you give a chance mostly work yeah. So, so, but it's okay, you know, yeah. it's okay because you're young, so it's okay right now. But as you grow older, this is what happens to you your emotional needs have become very strong. A lot of you here did not have emotional, did not pay attention five, seven years ago. But as you grow older, your emotional needs become very strong. I'm only saying that to you because I don't want to get to a place where it becomes so bad before you handle it. What is happening to you right now? Number one, your belief is that number one, time and um, men are time wasters. Number two, that they will leave you alone. So because of that, you built up a guard. There's a guard you have. Even as I'm asking you right now, you can tell I don't pay attention. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And the reason, not that you do not know, those are the things you've told yourself you don't know. And you've told yourself for such a long time that you can believe it. I think that what you have to do is to tell yourself something else. All right. Thank Praise you very God. Much. Thank, you, thank you. Okay, let me get someone else. Two more persons. Yeah. Can I get someone else from this? This, this guy over here. Let me get a, a man. There's a man over here with glasses. No, you're past him. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's him. That's him. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. My own Would you mind you taking off your glasses so I can see into your eyes? Thanks. Yeah. Um, my situation has been more of um, thinking that relationships are a waste of time. Okay. Yeah, because um, it's it's been due to a lot of things, but um, mostly attaining to the fact that. Uh, people just get into relationships sometimes they act like they are really into it and then what happened to you let's leave people talk about you now yeah um due to my line of work i get to counsel couples you get to counsel couples what do you do i'm a relationship counselor okay so um and i see couples that come for counseling and that's amazing your relationship counselor some of some of the things that um make them want to probably have a divorce yeah uh things that look very very minor yeah very minor and at some of the points you try to convince them to try and but they made up their mind yes they have so you you just get to question like these were people that were sometime in love 
very into the whole thing and even got to the point of getting married and now at the moment so how is that affecting you as a person right now um because makes, that has make you feel as if relationship is a waste of time yes okay yes so uh but but do you know something i understand how you come to that belief the reason why is that the people what is happening to you is like a doctor it's like a doctor thinking the whole world is sick but the doctor only thinks the whole world is sick because everyone that comes to the hospital is sick the only reason why you think this way is that everyone that comes to see you has a problem Never that don't see you don't have a problem um on my own personal life i've yeah. had relationships too that um even looked like the lady involved yeah. was more into me than i was into yeah her. and then probably because nobody's perfect very little things not like i'm underestimating how they would feel because i might feel it's little and to them it's not yeah but very little things i know that can actually be settled spoils the whole relationship to a point that it can't even recover and you're like this is someone that actually was so into so what is wrong with that it breaks up so it's like wasting your time like you spent um time you spent um affection you spent money you're a very brilliant guy you didn't fail in school right no i didn't fail. i can tell the reason why is that sometimes people that fail in school always know that sometimes failure is good I'm, t- I'm telling you the reason i'm saying so is that it takes a lot of wisdom for you to know that not all setback are a waste of time i met a lady after the after the second or third service and she hugged me and tears were in her eyes he said pastor Balaji, i want to thank you that i'm not married I said why he said because our laps destroyed it he said i thought that i was delayed she's i think 40 right now he said i thought i was delayed i said god was protecting me for myself and the reason i'm saying so to you sir is this your ideology that breakup means a waste of time is my challenge it's just like your ideology that failure means a waste of time sometimes the way you get it right is to fail you need to, we need to change our definition of failure and see failure as lessons of wisdom there are some things you will never learn except you fail you are a counselor how many times did you mess up when you started several times oh wow why didn't you stop um sir i think this is like a little bit different okay um i do not want i am someone that when i am into something i do everything possible to make it work yeah I, before I give up on any relationship, probably um, it's on the other person's part. The person says they don't want it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, going into marriage, I'm scared of divorce. I don't want to get married. So the question is that why do you think that you're very into it and give everything thing into it? Yeah, is that how you were raised? Is that did someone leave you when you were younger? No, not really. But I yeah. saw my parents work things out. Like exactly, there were a lot of bad situations, but at the end of the day, they came out victorious. Yeah. So I felt like if you have a partner, there are going to be problems, but you should just try understand yourself this is like you against the world both yeah. of you not the other way around the excellence where a lot of people just give up easily like a little problem and they are tired so imagine getting close to someone getting married having kids and then somewhere into it and they're like i'm tired because of something is little and they want to go for it so i want to ask you when you're dating what are you looking for looking out for someone i would probably settle down with no 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 what you're looking for is someone that has that character to sustain the marriage okay yes so if the person say i'm not the person have you failed sometimes they don't say it you might not no i'm it. not saying they don't have to say it if they behave that way that i'm not the person have you failed no so why are you tired i'm scared of going deeper like getting to a point of even getting married no 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 no, no. You, you don't have to get to the point of getting married because before you make up that point you make up your mind the person needs to have shown you that i'm that person by commitment what does commitment means like you said I fight for the relationship. So, if you cannot pass that stage, we can go deeper. You know, the major problem also is that when people are dating, they don't know what to do. And like Pastor Mo was saying the other day, questioning time, most people is using as bidding time. Because all, this, all these things the person shows you is that I'm the person or I'm not the person. So, I don't think it... And that's why dating is wonderful because... Oh, thank you for showing me you cannot date right or you, you always date right you know why because if it doesn't work it shows you the person was not the right person if it works it shows the person is the right person okay tell me what you think now yeah uh, sir it's just that i imagine 
dating like five, six, seven. I don't have that emotional strength. You know, you start a relationship, you put in everything, it stops, you start again from uh, what's your best color. No, I don't have I don't I don't have that strength. I've heard that before, I've heard that before, I've heard that before. Uh, awesome. So I will give you two answers to help. The first thing is this. I think that I personally think that you put on you put in too much too soon. Do you think so? Yes, I do. Why don't you correct that? I, I wish it was easy. I, I trust easily. It's not about, let me tell you something. There's something about you that is desperately looking for something that makes you put in too much when it's too soon. Uh, I would say I sometimes I feel very lonely. Exactly. Why just come in there right now? Yeah. Why do you, so you don't have a lot of friends? You don't have a lot of close friends? I know a lot of people. But no, you, you didn't answer have... my question. You didn't answer my question. You don't have a lot of close friends. Yes. Yeah, that's why you feel lonely. And you know the best the thing I think? I think when you have a girlfriend, you may suffocate her. Have you been accused of that thing before? Not really. But really, somehow. Um, not like someone saying that. But no, I... but they don't have to say it, but they show it that you are too much around. They are doing too much. The reason I'm saying so, the reason I'm saying so is it, just because of time. The reason I'm saying so is that I think you need to get the balance. If you don't have, and, and let me tell you something, now it's the guy, but I know a lot of girls that that way, that they're the one that suffocate the person. And what they want to do is that they want to build their world around their partner, but you must know that your partner also has other worlds. So, my counsel to you, the first thing is this, can you love easily? And gradually is that easy for you I'd have to be intentional about that I'll try you will try yes okay then the second thing is this when you're dating you need to know that is a testing process not a final process is that easy for you <laughs> that part is a little bit hard but so once you pick the girl now it's marriage <laughs> no not not really not really but I just feel like um... That is why I do not just go into dating. I could know you for a period of time. So, um, be friends with you. Then when I'm sure that... So, what needs to change for, the, for you to become better? What needs to change? I don't know. That's why I picked the mic. What needs to change is the way you think. What needs to change is the way you think. You need to think about... You need to think about this is that we are testing. We are not finalizing. You need to always tell yourself that. Say, I am testing. I am testing. Not finalizing. Not finalizing. I'm proving... I'm proving. I'm proving. I'm proving. This is a proving process. Yeah. This is a pro say this is a proving process. This is a proving process. Yeah. And remember to love gradually. Love what? Gradually. I think the way you would do it is that if you get to have other friends, you would. I I'm not surprised because if someone is very lonely, they get kind of very emotional. You know, it's it's always tough. It's always tough. It's always tough. It's always tough. In fact, if the person have other friends, you become very worried sometimes. So it's not like I don't have friends. But... No, 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 you don't, no, no. I'm not saying you don't have friends. And I'm not trying to make you feel bad about it. I'm only saying that you're lonely because there's emotional contribution that close friends will bring to you, not other friends. And that part is missing. And that will put pressure on your romantic relationship also. That's what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Do. You do understand that? Yeah, I do. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that you don't have friends. I'm not accusing you of anything. You know. Praise the Lord. Thank you. All right. Okay. Yeah. Can I get someone from this area? Yeah, that there's someone that what? Why are you pointing for your friend? Who? People are pointing for people. The what? Is it the guy you're speaking for? Okay, give the microphone to that lane. A lot of people are pointing for the... Yeah. Yeah, just pass the microphone. Wait, wait, what are you pointing to now? The guy in white. Okay, take out your glasses. The guy in white, you know. Yeah, take out your glasses, yeah. Give, give him the microphone, yeah.
please take off your card let me just let me your heart yeah, let me just see you yeah that's fine tell me then there's someone in front of you or beside you also yes tell me good afternoon good afternoon all right um in the past i've had people let's like, say leave me leave you yeah yeah I've been in couple relationships or almost relationships. <laughs> this is my twin brother. That's why it's, oh, it's my oh, twin. Oh, it's your twin brother. Uh, he knows I've been going through a lot. <laughs> oh, that's why he brought it today. Nah, I brought him eventually. Actually, he brought. I brought. Him. Okay, you brought each other. That's fine. So, um, in the past, I've been in relationships or almost relationships. Something that support are already serious and at some point things are going smoothly and they will leave you they leave okay and it's how many times has it happened to you <laughs> about five five times yeah so when they leave what do they always say they're always giving excuses like what you deserve better you deserve better uh, two how many of them say you deserve better? All of them or one of them? I've had two say you deserve better. Okay. Um, what did the three, remaining three say? I had one that just left. Said nothing? Yeah. And, okay, the uh, remaining two? One used, um, there's, she was going through something, or two of them were going through something. Okay. Time, and they gave that other excuse. Okay, the two of them, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so why do you think they leave you? Uh... It gets com okay. Apparently, I talked to two of them later. Later on, I think I talked to about two of them this year. Yeah, we reconnected, so we were talking. Yeah, so I brought it up. That, okay, what happened? Yo, yo, if people that leave, you always want to go back to them, right? At some point, but no, no, just yes or no questions. Yes. You know, the thing is that a lot of you want to paint a picture, you want to go here, go here. You know, that, that's why I always cut in the people, the five of them that left you. You wanted to go back to them at some point when they left you, yes or no. Okay, that's fine. Continue. Why did they leave you? So, um, she said, one said she didn't think I loved her as much. Okay. And I, I told her that I... No, don't worry. Don't worry. That's fine. The other one, what did the other one say? The other one said um, that it was a bit too much for her at the time. It was what? A bit too much at the time. She was going through something at the time. So okay. Okay. Let me ask you some questions. I, I'm trying to, I'm, I think I'm getting something here. Is relationship for you a place of safety? You always need a relationship to feel complete. When you're not dating someone, you struggle a little. You, you always look for that person to date. To be by your... If you're single, you feel incomplete. No, exactly. Let me ask your twin brother. Do you think so? For me or for... No, for him, for him. He, he, if he's single... Yeah. For him, yeah. I would say... Um, if he's single, it's a tough place for him when he's single, when he's not dating, right? It can be re any relationship, basically. What? Any relationship. It can be what? Any relationship. That can be him with any relationship. Any relationship. It doesn't have to be with a girl or a boy or... Good. I'm showing you an apart... A part, your, your, your brother showed me a pattern. So, so, so the thing... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you, brother. I'm single too. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. I love this twin brother. <laughs> Second thing. Yes, sir. All those people you date, what do you um, look for um, in them? Almost dates. Almost dates, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I didn't get the question. They meet a particular need in your life. What do they do for you? Companionship. Companionship. Yeah. So you, you get to be very lonely, right? Sometimes when they are not there. Uh, I've been single for four years now. Yeah, yeah, you can be single. <laughs> so you can be single and be involved. You can be single and entangled. <laughs> I'm not impressed. <laughs> someone says, I've not had sex with someone for two years. I say, but you have sex with yourself. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, a lot of people want hope to tell to tell a pastor, you know, <laughs> and I'll be like, you know, I've been single. Okay, okay. I, 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 you've been non sexual for four years? Ah. 
you see how simple that is i'm only saying so because you guys always want to give me these answers you 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 want to use the answer to push me away and i'm aware what you're doing so i'm just trying to bring you back I've been, I've been single for four years i've been single for four years but even up to last month something happened praise god so why do you think they leave you why didn't they leave you yeah why do you think they leave you yeah tell me i honestly to be honest I yeah don't know. you don't know okay I, I, I'm, I'm also I'm, I, the only way I can know is what you're going to tell me why they leave you. Right. Okay, but there's something that makes them leave you. Okay, so do you? So what? Tell me what you think about women. Uh, describe women in relationship. Describe three of their big things to you. Yeah. Uh, support. Okay. Emotionally or whatever way. Support. Yeah. Um, Companion. Companion. And friendly. And friendly. What, what are you to them? I should think the same. No, no, just tell me in your own words. Uh, lover, friend, companion as well. Companion. You know, you know what I really think? You need to tell me. So, so when you were younger, um, you got a lot of love from your parents, then you lost it at some point, right? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. You know, you yes. Tell me about that. Um, I grew up in a very loving family, and I wasn't doing well in school at some point. Yeah. And it became a hassle in the house. So the people that loved you turned against you because you didn't do well. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember back in school, so when I was with someone, uh, the person tried to help me, and at the same time, I had feelings for the person okay I, I i i know what's going on now so what is happening is this you can go and read about it it's called an ans an anxious relationship pattern okay an anxious relationship pattern is someone that's been exposed to love but the love was withdrawn so he tasted what love is so the person now is looking for love all over and when those person always date someone people eventually leave them because number one they pick people that cannot show them the love that they have received the number two that really happens to them is that they become overbearing in love if you notice all the things he said why are you in a relationship emotional connection 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 so they they didn't they, a lot of their personal connection has to do with somebody else and his twin brother further went on to say is that when he's not in a comfortable relationship with somebody he's unstable and because he's unstable, he will do things that will sabotage the relationship. He will not even know consciously. So, for example, maybe his girlfriend is not available right now. He'll be outrageous at why the girlfriend is not available. But meanwhile, she's having her own life. And eventually, that will come back to him and say that, how can I act on this person that seems irrational? Have you experienced that before? Oh, I see. Do you know what I'm talking about? You know? Yeah sometimes sometimes you know let me tell you what i think you should do and i'm going to close with this i'm going to close with this i think what you need to do is to first love yourself and love me i love your twin brother i love you too But I'm not surprised that they're twin and they're close because it's an anxious attachment. He will always be looking for validation from his twin brother. Because, and that's why his twin brother is very loud like that. Because his twin brother will be, be the one that provides him security and that comfort zone. Yeah. Did you see, as much as the swimmer is finding funny and jesting, he is not able to respond. He's not able to respond. Because for him, a lot of comfort finds... When he's upset, when you're upset with him, it gets very destabilized, right? Twin brother. Yeah. 
yeah when something goes wrong in your relationship he's very how does he handle it yes with him let me let me say it another way who takes nonsense from each other more he takes more of your nonsense because the reason why is an is an anxious attachment he would always put himself in relationship where he's abused he will always be in relationship where he takes the nonsense he will always do too more than enough for the partner it will always be subservient because of a pattern in the relationship and when you do that over time the person you're doing with doesn't want that kind of relationship so they move on this is what i think you should do i think you need to deal with your with your attachment style i think you should do that i think that that thing that happened when you failed in school is a big thing in your life that you have not addressed am i right and how your parents responded to it is a big thing that you have not addressed so somehow because the people that loved you pushed you away you are still grappling and looking for love in places and i think that's something you have to fix hallelujah amen amen because you said this i'm going to close by reading things out i read this before last week i think some weeks ago but i want to read it again signs of anxious attachment anxious insecure attachment style number one they run towards relationship to seek connection and safety they run towards relationship to seek connection and safety number two they have had their emotional needs met before and now they try very hard to get it met number three they depend on romantic relationship to meet their needs number three they depend on what romantic relationships to be their needs number four they get angry and overwhelmed when their partner is busy and unavailable it's a pattern so these are the people that are anxious you know insecurity attachment and the other thing is this they are scared about feeling lonely and bored in their relationship and this thing if you are that kind of person all of these things will pertain to you all of these things will pertain to you but the opposite will be the avoidance the avoidance really talk about their needs and that sounds like the lady i spoke to first where's the lady i spoke to first they really talk about their needs they really talk about emotional needs they just they're just blank they really talk about emotional needs number two they they try to they try not to make sure that emotional needs in fact, as I'm talking right now, I'm thinking of a lady in front of me that had it, but I didn't even see it until I just spoke right now. You know, so they avoid and they try not to, ex they try not to be aware of their emotional needs. They try not to connect to people and expect emotional needs. And the reason why is that they have been disappointed before and they never want to experience it again. And the third thing is this, the third thing is this, the third thing is this this kind of avoidance they find it's you know um they never want to be in a place where they become emotional helps for other people then it's a very terrible place for them they never want to be in that kind of place and the reason i'm saying so is this this is the reason i'm saying so most of the time people are either anxious when you are anxious you are overbearing you're overbearing when you're avoidant you're very defensive you need to identify where you are and begin to move two of them at the extreme of a pendulum you need to find a way to be in the middle you need to find a way to be what in the middle because once you are avoidant you build a shelf it'll be the wall that kicks love away from you once you are anxious everything that looks like love you take so you take nonsense so there are two extremes what you need to do is to find a center Put yourself in the center and be there praise the lord did i explain something today but how do you do that you don't do that by saying that so let me tell you what the anxious do if a girl or a guy mistreat them they say the next person i come i'll do this to him you don't do that by changing the fruits you do that by changing what the tree you should ask yourself how exactly am i thinking that's making me feel this way the anxious person feels very unsafe when they're not in a relationship the avoidant feels more comfortable when they're alone and ask yourself how can i change your thinking 
so I can fix this in my life. Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed today? All right, let's go ahead and pray. Can you stand on your feet? Let's pray.